My name's Kevin Steed. Subscribe to Hill Steven on YouTube.com or I'll come to your house and ruin your life. Alright, this will be your TNA Impact review for August the 8th, 2013. Overall, the show, it really wasn't their best show. It was watchable. But if you decided to not watch the show, I really can't blame you. There are some of endings to some of the matches that I didn't agree with. The show opens up with Chris Saban and Bully Ray. They're in the ring and they're talking about their main event for next week's, you know, cage match at Hardcore just for the world title. Just pretty much what they've been saying week after week, you know, promoting this match. And after that, Brooke Cohen comes out with the contract. And she's reading the contract. She tells Bully Ray that if Bully Ray were to lose, that he will never get another title shot at the world title in TNA ever again. Which Bully Ray gets mad. He's like, you know what? I'm going to get my revenge on you, Chris Saban, you, Brooke, and especially Hulk Hogan. And they signed the contract, and it's whatever. Just not your best way to do a contract signing. Because when you think of a contract signing, you think of there being a desk and, you know, them sitting down. But, you know, it is what it is. Then we get into the first match of the night, Samoa Joe and Jeff Hardy Battle for Glory Series match. Overall, it was an okay paced match. Both showed decent offense. Your typical Samoa Joe spots and Jeff Hardy spots as well. It seemed that Samoa Joe was going to win, but Anderson, who was doing commentary, distracted Samoa Joe, which gave Jeff Hardy the ability to fold up Samoa Joe for the 1-2-3 win. I didn't agree with the way it ended, you know, having Jeff Hardy fold up Samoa Joe, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Then we get to the second match of the night, Magnus and Anderson. Overall, an okay match. Both guys showed good pacing, good offense. But the way it ended just really got to me. Like, you have Bobby Roode come out to the ring with the steel chair. And it seemed like he was going to hit Magnus. But at the end of it, he hit Anderson on the ribs. And it caused Magnus to get disqualified. And just a shitty way to end a good match. And then we get into the Tito Ortiz segment of the night. You know, Tito Ortiz, he's in the ring. Jerry Borash is about to interview him. And... Just before Tito speaks on the mic, Angle comes out and he tells Tito Ortiz, you know what, you're in my world now, you're no longer in the cage, you're in my ring, I respect what you've accomplished, but I want you to respect my space. Just the same way that Angle did with, with Rampage Jackson. Just another way to shit on Tito Ortiz. And Bully Ray comes out and Bully Ray goes, you know what, I don't care who you guys are. You guys better respect me. I can beat you up, Ortiz, and I can beat you up, Kurt Angle. And just leave. Like, again, a corny way to shit on somebody, if you ask me. If it's going to be their debut, if you get what I mean. And then we get into the bromance, Robbie and Jesse Goddard versus Gunner and James Storm and ODB. And again, it was just an okay match. Nothing really special in this one. It ended up with Gunner and James Storm. Winning with their double team for the win. And then we get into Kazarian and Daniels. Overall, it could have been a great match. There was so much potential in this. It ended up with both of them leaving the ring for a double countout. And just taunting and shit. And then Bobby Roode comes in with the chair. He drops the chair as he's walking to the ring. He gets in the ring. Daniels and Kazarian follow him. They talk about how people have been talking about the reformation of the main event mafia. People have been talking about the Ace and Eights. But they talk about... Those three, you know, Kazarian, Daniels, and Rude, how they're going to reform this group, obviously being Fortune, but the three guys, which didn't make sense to me. But overall, you know, they're talking about how they're going to take over the Bountiful Glory series, and that's how it ended. We get into the main event of the night, Chris Sabin with the mystery partner against a team of Team 3D. The mystery partner ended up being Kurt Angle. An okay match, but both teams showed good offense. It could have gone either way. A lot of near falls in this one. Ended up with the table spot of Bully Ray. He had a table set up turn buckle post area. And it seemed like he's about to like spear Saban through the table. Saban moves out of the way. Bully Ray goes through the table. Then Saban pushes out Devon. And then Saban gets on the, on the top rope area. Does a 450 splash on Bully Ray for the 1-2-3. And the winner being Kurt Angle and... Saban, giving Saban some momentum going into next week. But overall, again, the show really wasn't the best impact. It could have been better. Just some of the endings of these matches were shitty to me. But overall, it is what it is. If you missed the show, I really can't blame you. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of this video. Until next time, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.